Mm -mm -mm. Early. Ah. I know. This was a last minute thing. Good evening, everyone. How are you? How are you guys doing? What's today? Monday? No. Yes. Is it? Yeah. yeah it's Monday. Wow. I thought it was Sunday for whatever reason. How's everyone doing? There we go. Okay. A little cool. Hello, Kathy. Anna, how are you? How's everyone doing? Yes, it is freezing cold and it is snowing out there. If you're in Jersey or near Jersey, it is snowing. Hello, Celine. Murder Films. Okay. Laura, Michelle, Deb, how are you? Karen, Lisa D. What's that name there? I can't read. Uh, Lauren, Cheryl, Patricia. What's that name there? Alpha. Oh, Alpha. Yeah. Christopher, Patricia, how's everyone doing? Nisi, hello. Angela. So, um, you know, we're going to try something a little different. We, um, hello, Harmony, Kathy. We did the whole mine investigation where we showed the whole entire thing and and commented on that. Okay, uh, as we went. So um, we decided, and we all know when I say we, it's me. But uh, we decided that uh, we would try this with another platform. Hello, John, Teresa, uh, where we kind of go back to the old um, cable access shows. And if you don't know, we did, uh, we had our own cable access show for probably three years, maybe four, probably three. Oh, happy birthday, Christopher. Sorry. Happy birthday. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm good. And we um, we would uh, do different shows on different subjects about different things in different places. And um, we did this one. We first started with the Creeper Gallery, actually. That's the first show we did where we met Donna. Somebody had the idea to go in to find this place called the Creeper Gallery and actually interview the people that owned it. Who was that? And talk. I, it, was, it was part of the group thing. It was... But, you know, the who is that? Guy? I don't know who did it, but it was somebody. <laughs> and uh, hello, Bonnie. So that's how we met Donna. So this is again, um, we're going to go back. We're going to do this every now and then where we kind of review um, memorable haunted objects and kind of tell the story and show clips about them. And again, we're going to go in the way back time machine. So if you just started watching us like this year, or last year, or whatever, we've been investigating haunted objects at the Creeper Gallery for. I don't know, three, four years now, easy, more, maybe more. So some of them are going to go way back, you know, early days. Um, so uh, we're going to, again, we're going to start the episode, kind of go into it and comment on things as it, as it goes. Um, this was, again, um, one of the most memorable for me uh, was this cape. And we're going to get into the haunted, uh, the cursed box will be another episode, which was, when we tell you the whole story about that, I'm sure we went over it, but we'll go over it again. That was a really whew, out there one. But this is the Cape. This is the episode. We'll start. We'll stop. We'll comment. Um, this was, uh, again, one of the many objects that was in the Creeper Gallery. Uh, we would just take them randomly and investigate them. And this was one that Donna's medium at the time, Jeanette, uh, she read all the items back then. So you're going to see her, you're going to see us, you're going to see parts of the investigation. And like I said, we'll comment throughout. So without further ado. It's the opening. Welcome to another episode of New Jersey Paranormal. We're inside the Creeper Gallery in New Hope, PA. 
Today we're discussing haunted objects and the stories behind them. So what we're looking at today is a, a Victorian morning cape. It's a little worse for wear, as a lot of them are. Very decorative, though. Uh, initially, I bought it because of this ribbon. This is a very rare piece because you never see a pallbearer ribbon. It's only used for pallbearers at funeral, and you rarely would ever see a woman carrying a casket, correct? Absolutely. Um, but I was, I had to have this. This just spoke to me. I purchased it from a Fredericksburg, Virginia estate, and um, there wasn't a lot of history, uh, but it definitely has an attachment, a woman uh, for me. Uh, I didn't send you a picture of this because at the time we weren't doing that. Right. Uh, but you did do an event here at the Creeper Gallery and uh, this was one of the pieces that we brought out. Uh, we wanted to know a little history because we knew there were children involved somehow but didn't know how. Uh, we knew there was a woman involved. Uh, so we had you lay your hands on and you told us about Victoria and how she drowned her children and yes, called it an accident and they so i want to just comment one second in the early days of the creeper gallery jeanette who was donna's uh, exclusive reader at the time is right there jeanette would do events and we actually met jeanette this way where she they would invite people to bring in objects of their own that people thought were haunted and jeanette would actually handle them and do readings on them and that's why she's referencing about she was doing an event and Jeanette put her hands on this particular cape. And of course, it stops with a woman who drowned her children. What a way to start. Never figured out that she murdered her own children. And she was also probably a pallbearer at their Absolutely. funeral. Um, so you can give me a little more impression about what you were saying about her. We know she is extremely attached to John yes, from New she Jersey is. Paranormal. Yes, she, she is. She thinks that uh, he looks like her husband. Yes, yes. I'll let you take it from here. Okay, Victoria was an evil lady who drowned both of her children in the bathtub. They were twins. The children were two twins. There were two boys, two twin boys that she drowned in the bathtub. She was jealous of the attention that her husband gave to the children. So she decided to drown them in a bathtub and was never prosecuted for the murders. Well, in Victorian times, Women they didn't weren't. believe no. that a woman could kill her child. No. They felt that was beyond something she could do. There was rumors. There was rumors okay. that she had killed uh, the children, but she said that the babies had slipped out of her hand uh -huh. and they had drowned and there was no witnesses, there was no one else in the house or anywhere near Victoria who could ever tell a different story. It was suspected, it was whispered, but she was never prosecuted. Right. She was a pool bearer for both her children. Where they probably were both buried at the same time. They were time. both buried at the same time. And then she ended up living quite a long life, She right? lived a long life. Right. She outlived her husband, who she tells me looks a lot like John, and she's also telling me that she misses him. And she is also mentioning that it was an accident. Oh, yeah, right. And it wasn't an accident. Well, what we found, we had a gentleman come in. He's no longer a practicing medium, but in his younger years, he was a practicing medium. And um, we had just opened the Red Room, and this was one of the pieces that I brought in. Uh, he said, could I go back? I'm like, sure. Uh, he has separated himself from it because he said it just about killed him doing yes. that job, right? Yes. And he immediately touched the cape. And as soon as he touched it, he fell backwards like he was fainting. Sure. And he said his arm and hand were burning. So evidently she doesn't like men too much, certain men. And maybe he, she didn't want his, her secret out to him since right. he would know. He would but know. But he did tell me that it was an evil woman. She was an evil woman. Attached to the cave. Yes. And then even to this day he'll come in, 
but he will not go near the cape because he feels she's still very strongly attached to it. Yes, she is. Um, also, our help on Friday nights always hears a woman walking around in high and heels. high heels, yes. It's, it's on the hardwood floor, and that still goes on. The strange thing is, is her name was Victoria, right. but she was called Ruby. Wow. And I don't get the connection between the name Ruby and Victoria. Maybe that's what her husband called Maybe her. Maybe her husband called her Ruby, but they're, they're calling, she's telling me Ruby also. Wow. So was it Ruby Victoria, Victoria Ruby? Yeah, so we're going to get into this um, a little more. Um, you know, we're going to go ahead and, oh, crap. Hold on one second. I'm just trying to do something. Why can't I do it? Do, do, do. Sorry, guys. Just give me a second here. I'm trying to. I can't do it on here. There we go. I had to get rid of someone. They were making stupid comments. If you didn't see it there. Um, before we jump ahead. Um, I know some people know about some of this already, so don't answer ahead in the comments. Um, we, we're gonna tell the whole entire story here. This, whole, this episode covers everything from the beginning where we're introduced to it, to the investigation, to who owns it and what happened with that person as well. So we're gonna cover the and whole And something else thing. that happened that wasn't even caught on, uh, on video with the cape too. Okay. But um, we, uh, like I said, we're getting this information. Um, Victoria ground her, she drowned her children. Um, I suppose you look like the husband. Um, so we're going from here and, in, and I'm going to continue just to play this part out here. Oh, wrong way. Could have been a nickname. Or it was a nickname. Yeah. And, but a nickname. there's Ruby coming through. It's also. a wonder she didn't kill the husband. No, she left the husband. That uh, she was jealous. That's uh, why she wanted. She killed the babies oh, because okay. she didn't like the attention the husband gave the children. So maybe she had postpartum depression. Maybe, you or know? maybe she was just evil and killed or her just two evil. children. That's and possible. now she likes. She has a new husband. She has a new husband, and it's yeah. John from the Paranormal Society. And he seems a little obsessed with her too. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the story on the Cape. And it's a, a very interesting piece. We thought we had it sold, but it wasn't sold. So it's meant to be a... Somebody has to take this home and be friends with Victoria. Oh, yeah. Someone we know who has... that should be. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, thanks You're a lot. You're welcome. So, before you get into the deep of it, I yeah. am going to say this, that, that they prefacated at the very end about somebody taking it home. And there was deep discussion of John seriously going to a hotel to be alone she's, she's, with this kid. See, here we go. We're I, getting I, towards I the end in the beginning. This is no. what she does every single That had to be put out there. No, it didn't you until want... we built to it to the end. But no. let me just tell you how the video ends. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll, then we'll show you the credits. Storytelling is not somebody's forte. I won't mention whose name, but. <laughs> I mean, jeez. Uh, anyway, let me get back to where we were instead of where we're going to be. No, we're there. Uh, so we're at this point where they're telling me that this woman did all these things and I supposedly look like her husband, and we're going to investigate this object. Now, we supposedly she doesn't like men, but she loves her husband and she was jealous of the attention the husband gave the children. Uh, another person, man, touched it, and supposedly his hands were burning and all that. So we go in there, and at this particular investigation, it was me, Tanya, and Kenny. I don't remember why Chris wasn't there, but Chris wasn't there. And um, I think this is where we actually get into parts of the investigation. What I'm taking out now, I'm going to try to take out the card. What is that? Let's read the card and see what it yeah. says. Here, I'll hold this. All right. Oops. Oopsie. It says Victoria Morning Cape from a Fredericksburg VA 
estate, mid 19th century, children from this area wore this type of cake, cape, cake. Uh, pole bearer ribbon is particularly rare. Let me turn around this way. Uh, immense sadness combined with a very dark impression. Since it was brought into the shop, you can clearly hear high heel shoes. We heard footsteps. Yes, we did. Walking around on the wood floors at night. Investigations yielded activity. Medium Bob asked if he could touch it and immediately felt backwards saying he became very dizzy. He said he felt evil. His hand and arm were burning. He felt it had a female attachment to it. Now, I don't feel any burning right now. Um, there is kind of a, a weird feeling in my stomach a little bit. Um, we're going to try this one here because it, it, it that's kind of freaky, right? I mean, it gives you a I'm little glad freaky. you're holding it, yeah. It gives you a little freaky vibe. I'm not going to like my hands not burning, but I feel cold on so the back of my neck. <laughs> that, that seems to be the running pattern with objects. I'm the one holding them. I'm the one kind of, you know, instigating and, and trying to engage them. And everybody else is kind of like... You know, unlike uh, my friend Nikki, who's not watching now, I don't see, I, I don't have a bottle of holding water that I, that I throw on everybody. But uh, so far, yes, I'm starting to feel a little queasy in my stomach initially by being around it and holding on to it. A child would wear when they were, I guess, how is a kid going to be a pole bearer though? But this is again, on the back of my neck is like, a kid can't hold up a coffin. freezing. Um, well, they could help. There were this oh. type of cape, pole bearer ribbon. It's a pole bearer ribbon. It's not, they weren't a pole bearer. Oh, okay. This is just probably, that probably belonged to their, their Whatever, father yeah. or whoever was carrying the, the immense sadness combined with a very dark impression. Immense sadness. I'm going to hang that there. I'm going to try the two REM pods. There. Yeah, the chair is a good idea. We still have that out there too. Oh, Sorry, the detector just went off it's right like underneath there. Um, we don't know the name of the person who may be attached to this cape here. Um, somebody did handle it and they said they felt sad. They felt the burning sensation. I didn't get that. What I got was what felt like someone had a cold hand and they put it on the back of my neck. Look at that. Look at that. I, did, I got chills too. It is really super, super, super cold right here. Yeah. I mean, my shoulders are freezing. Right so who now. is this? That was quick too. So this is one of the first times I had felt cold spots before and cold air move through places we've been in through the years. This was one of the very first times I felt cold surround me and attached to me. And this is when it first started happening with this cape. And it felt like fingers around my neck first and around my shoulders and it spread to my entire body. And I never ever had that happen before. And it made me nervous. So it's something like jumping, jump, like jumped on you, like what Amy calls it, Amy Allen? That's what Amy, I found out later that Amy referred to it as jumping, where she said, if you feel that cold on you, the spirit is jumping, you're trying to take your energy or attach to you. Again, at this time, I didn't know. I just knew whatever it was, was really near yeah. me and on me. Who is that this? Really quick. Look at that. Well, Bobby. There's something that's... coming off of that thing. Oh, are you a... Uh... Okay. Okay. You don't really want to make your presence known here. That thing hasn't gone off all night. Nope. Yep. Now look at it. It's going nuts. Are you trying to warn us? Is that what you're trying to do? Should we not be handling this? Should I not be touching it? Are you attached to that cape? I still I feel that cold on my shoulders and on my neck. What the? Wow, that is weird. Are you touching John? Are you here next to me? I, I feel a coldness on my shirt, even my arm through my shirt. I feel it. I just really? heard a little kid go, uh-huh. Did you? Right? I swear to God, they had to have heard it on the live feed. I mean, th this is, I feel weird. 
Is this you? Do I feel you, the coldness from you? Now it's gone. And I looked here because I thought it was somebody outside, but it's not. Where'd you? No, it's here. It's, it's on my arm. Are you touching John? I'm like feeling right here, like it's standing right here. I might want to turn the SLS on. I got the flare on you now. You jumped I mean, from uh, 79 to 62. Yeah, the temperature's dropping. Now it feels warmer. It just came and went. That's freaking nuts. What's going on with that cape? Is that your cape? It's because I was touching it and I was holding it like this. Should I be touching this pole bearer ribbon? We're going to put it on. Is this disrespectful to be handling this? Is that why you react to it? I say these things as I'm touching it and holding it, you know, and, and again, Chris brings up a point while we're watching the clip about, you know, you do get a little freaked out, especially when you, when you move away and your, your body returns to normal temperature and then it follows you. There was no place I could get away from whatever this was that was trying to attach to me. And I never had that happen before. Oh, she, 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 she wanted you. Yeah, that, that, this was, again, one of the more bizarre things I've ever investigated. Here it comes. Is it okay if we put it on? As soon as I start touching it. I'm going to put that cape on, or oh, I'm going to make John put wow. it on. That is crazy. Away from 71 degrees by you to seven, uh, 62. See, it's the temperature. As soon as I start touching it, the temperature drops. That because I felt crazy. it also. That's why I wanted to get the floor to, to uh, verify it. Could you... Could you go make that music box light up? Or if you were to say a word, you have to concentrate though and say the word out loud. This box here may repeat it. Whose coffin did you catch? Remember that. The ovulus is there. Let me explain to you that I'm going to say this on the video. The ovulus has 2,000 words programmed into it. The theory is that spirits can manipulate the, the piece of equipment to say the word they want to say. So I'm explaining it right here. How it works. Harry. Oh my God, here it comes again. This is weird. Yeah, and I got it right on. This is so weird. You it, gotta feel this. Is it dropping, Kenny? Oh yeah. You gotta feel this. It's so right here. I'm, I'm coming, coming. I'm coming. I'm so coming. Weird. Okay. Go Come near. Go near. Touch me. Look, I'm touching you. It's following me. I feel it right oh, now. I'm touching yeah, it. Yeah, she's steady. It's, it's following me. I feel it on my arm right now. It's following me. Circle. Look, I'm touching this one. You touch that it's one. You interact with you. Yeah, it's near me. It's. it's Why are you bothering it's, God? It's holding my arm. Whatever it is, so my arm is the... freezing. This is. See, that's the sign. That's the sound of concern. Tiny went over there, touched it. Nothing. She's like, I'm touching it. Nothing. It went from there to following me. And I, that's where I was just like in my head saying, I can't get away from this. Yeah, but I can't get away from if this. If you go by what the medium said and, and the whole, you know, intake of what was going on, she loved her husband, was so obsessed with his attention and everything that she killed her children, drowned them. She, here's the opportunity. You look like him for her to recapture that. Of course, she's going to follow and attach yeah, well, to you. Still, I couldn't get away from it at this point. Yeah. I've never had this happen before. It's holding my arm. Now I walked away from it. Now I don't feel it. Touch holding the cape arm. again. She likes you, John. <laughs> wow. I mean, that was weird. Do you want me to put this back? If you want it back in the case where it was, go ahead and light that circle again in front of me. Maybe you were the one saying release. Maybe you wanted to be taken out of that case and away from everything back there. Is that true? Were you the one saying that? Does John remind you of somebody? It's right here. I'm Maybe. Johnny. <gasps> Holy oh, oh my Are God. you kidding me? You gotta film that. <laughs> it went from uh, Johnny and it said black. 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 Look, I'm wearing, well, I'm wearing no, black but, underneath No, but the cave, Jeez. the cave. Oh, the cave is black. That is the holy thing that's ever happened. You went from holy 70 to 62 and then it said my name. name. Do you believe that? What are the odds? Just crazy. so you guys know, oh my there God. are 2,000 words programmed into that box. And the likelihood of it saying my name is again one out of 2,000 with the coldness on my. I'm standing next to the damn cape. <laughs> this is nuts.
You are so kidding was, uh, me? 12 degree temperature drop and then his name got called. A 12 degree so that so, those sounds that kept going the bleep bleep, it was like John had to bleep out all the we curses were all that they were doing. Yeah, we were. It was it was one of the craziest. You want to talk about random things happening, false positives, equipment going off for whatever reason that could be explained. The medium said, "I look like the husband." You know, it was whatever attracted to me, one attack could connect with me. I'm feeling cold all over my body that I can't get away from. And the one, two words the ovulus says is ovulus. I mean, it's John, my name, Johnny, and black. I mean, you can't make that stuff up. You can't. It just happened in real time, you know? And yes, we were cursing like crazy. That's right. And it was great for the, the editor of the uh, Woodbridge TV channel because he had to edit that <laughs> out. <laughs> it was like machine gun fire. Temperature, well, temperature drops. Drop. It's it's literally on my arm, right here. I feel cold from here to here, like something is holding on. It onto likes my you. Arm. Whatever it is, likes you. My name is John, and I'm I'm okay standing here and talking with you. Could you tell me what is your name? Could you think really hard and say your name into that box there? John, I think you should do an EVP session. Oh man, that was bizarre. You should do it here. Oh, I can't rewind like you did and get it. Well, you just do the, I'll questions, do the questions and then I'll... Yeah. Uh... It's still here. It's right here. All right. Oh EVP my God. session. John, you ask the question. You got to feel it... this. Am, am I the only one feeling this? You're the this? only one feeling yeah, it, John. I this is here to here. Freezing cold. I could see I mean, from probably right here on you down just past your waist. It likes you. you. You probably right, remind move. the person of someone. Your left arm on the bottom. Sense. Johnny, oh, no. did you hear that? Heard it. Oh, <laughs> and your face is bright red. Maybe like her father, they yeah, said, or his wow. father. So you might look like one of the child's so fathers. So just record and go, right? I, it's, you got to put that away. That thing is... No way. It is freezing by me. I can't freaking take I, that. I think we should do the bones on the bottom left. Okay, I, let's I do think the bones. That's the same which one? Bones that were over there, which we had a really good time with. The I mean, I'm gonna Jesus. I'm going to grab the bones. Uh, put that thing back. It's, right, so no John, way. I'm freezing. freezing. Yeah, I'm freezing. I put that the bones. You got to put that thing back. It's, okay. it's interfering with everything else. All right, I'm going to take... Oh, my God. It's on the back of my neck. Oh, Get that oh, thing in the case, it, man. <gasps> oh, there it goes because he's, he's touching it. See that? That was John. That's... Okay. This is me. Look at that. That's that. Because you touched it to put it back. Yep. Now I'm it's going freaking nuts. Okay. Look, look, it's pissed off. Shut that one off. So like the All right, step away. Oh my God, is it cold? Can you say his name again? What's his name, that guy? You said it before. Uh, it is cold. I'm, I'm not kidding. I am cold. What's his name? Holy <laughs> It is so freaking cold. He just went from 71 to 59. Holy I'm telling you, whatever's 59. around me is, is freezing. Now he's slowly Can going up to 60. Make it colder by John. It, uh, I'm telling you, you gotta put that thing back. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna touch I, your tape again. It is beyond bizarre cold next to me. Right, put that thing back. <laughs> Here I go. All yeah, right, she's putting it back now. You can you, calm down. You can go follow in there if you want to. Possess Tanya, do whatever you gotta do. Just leave me the hell alone. All right, it's going back. It's staying in the case. No one's gonna mess with it anymore. That cold is not leaving me. It is not leaving me. She wants to oh man. Oof. Where are you feeling? It's it's always on my neck and the back of my arm. Right. right here. It just it won't leave me. It's here. Really? It's here on my neck. It's here on my own. That's all I feel. I want to film for you with the floor. You still feeling it? It won't leave. Tony said there's blue on the back. It won't leave. Yeah, but I couldn't get a stance. That's because I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to lose it. Here, do the. Like no matter where I go, I'm thinking like. So I'm I'm walking around. I'm going to different places, trying to. And when every time I moved, I was fine. My temperature would return, and then the cold would find me, and it would find me. And it would find me. It's almost and, like walking away from someone and yeah. somebody coming right up behind and, you. And that jump clip there was, we, we kept it there and we investigated some other things, but nothing else would come through.
we got nothing from any other item we did. We did try to do another item or two, but it seemed like she was just blocking everything and the cold that kept happening and happening. And Tanya put it away and she was still coming after me. It's here. It's right here. It's, it's back again. It literally won't go away. Yeah, it's look, right here. The back of his neck is blue. Oh, uh, it's not picking it up on the. It's all here. Damn. It's, it's like literally like attached to. See. I gotta get away from this area. I I don't know. It won't. Are you feeling stop sick? Stop following me. No, but I feel. But even no matter where I you move, it follows you. That's what I mean. I don't know where to go away from. Maybe whatever this is. Ooh, wow. Seventy-four to sixty. See, it's right behind me. It's and here. Then it goes right Why? Right you, here. Let me come sit next it, to you. It doesn't leave. Let on me come my sit side. next to you and. <gasps> and look, see, that's what I mean. Whatever it is, I'm going to go sit next to John. Biatch. And you were going to go sit next to me, and what are you going to do? Too bad. Uh, Too bad, Biatch. Too bad. No, I can't. I got to get up. <laughs> okay, I just sat Tell down. Tell me if you feel it. Sit, sit, sit here. Okay, here. Tell Hold me if you feel it. See, oh. I go walking by and then it goes off. All right, I'm here. This is as nuts as it's right, been for me right in, in a long time. All right, come touch me. Before. Come on. Come touch me. I'm sitting right here where John was sitting. Come touch me. Come on. I am. I'm, I'm like going to go outside for a minute. There. To see if it, go yeah. ahead. Come touch me. I'm going to go get that cape and I'm going to rip it up. I'm gonna burn it. I'm gonna burn it and dance around it and laugh. Got like a half a degree. That's it. That's it. John's biggest one was 12 degrees. John literally went out there. We're now in studio with. So, um,. I did go outside, and it, you rarely, if you've investigated with us or you watched us, I rarely tap out. Um, it takes it takes some some pretty serious stuff for me to um, to tap out. Uh, uh, there's been buildings I've been in that I've had to tap out for a while. There's been objects where I stop investigating it and I'll put it back, but like tapping out and leaving the building is is rare. It's once in a while. Um, if you just started watching, what we're doing is we're reviewing um, haunted objects, our, our kind of favorite stories. Um, and this is one about a, a cape that belonged to a woman who drowned her two babies. And supposedly, I resembled uh, the husband. So that's the story of the investigation. Now we followed up. We have the woman who purchased the cape now in studio with us. That was our studio right there that cool background. Chris and I are kind of dressed up for this episode. I, I don't remember why we did it, but we did. Um, and we have um, Kelly in studio with us who now owns the Cape at this point. So we're trying to follow up with her to see what happened after all that stuff happened to the person now who owns it. Our special guest, Kelly. Uh, Kelly is actually the person who purchased the cape after watching the live feed. Uh, my first question to you, Kelly, is why would you purchase that cape after seeing how it affected me? Um, I just kind of feel drawn to objects, and uh, that was one of the ones that I felt drawn to. I think no one is beyond saving, and regardless of what she's done, I kind of wanted to give her an opportunity to heal, like in a safe way place kind of in a way so I wanted to see what I could experience and if you know I could kind of give her an opportunity to show me that she was not evil and uh, that's not what happened <laughs> so, 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 so you thought the environment would change the, yeah, the personality yeah, yeah, like when behavior I, yeah, of mm -hmm, exactly okay. so you brought it home yeah where did you place it and did anything happen um, initially I had it upstairs in my hallway and uh the first thing that we noticed was constantly here walking up and down the stairs. And that was one of the claims. Yeah, and then doors would open and close. And there was a laundry room door right across from where she was hanging on the wall. And the one night it was just shaking. And we couldn't figure out what was going on. And this hasn't happened before? No, and I actually turned the light on in the hallway. And I've slept with the light on in the hallway probably since I brought was it home. Was this night one or was this? This was night one. Wow. Yep. That was the first thing That's that happened. right out of the gate. Yeah, so 
initially I was like, okay, so this is extremely active. How am I going to handle this? I ended up getting a shadow box, and I put her, locked her in a shadow box, has a lock and key on the side of it, moved her downstairs, and then that's when we started hearing footsteps on our kitchen floor. It sounded like high heels. Wow. And, you know, it was just constant activity for at least a week. And then I had somebody else in my house, and he just told me I need to leave. And I was like, wait, what's going on? Wasn't there any concerns initially with the footsteps that, hey? Um, there was, but I've had things like that happen with okay. other objects, so it wasn't concerning to me. She wasn't harming any of us, just kind of scaring us a little bit. Right. So, But it concerned me, you enough to move it from one place yeah, to another. Yeah, because I don't want it near my bedroom right. when okay. I'm sleeping. It didn't, it didn't kind of... So, so just real quick, um, Kelly, who we kind of lost touch with, um, um, she collects haunted items and she has at this point a number of them and she is one of those people we know a few of them now uh some of them are in this group now that are sort of caretakers of these objects and the energy attached to them which is something very noble about that um yeah. when you're again the caretaker of an object that meant something to someone or belonged to someone and keeping that memory alive and in a respectful positive way but on the other side of that coin is there's good energy and there's bad energy. And you take a chance when you knowingly bring bad energy into your home. And she went in with the right idea. Like maybe this was a damaged woman who in my home, with the respect that I give the objects and the other spirits here, maybe this person just needs to heal and be in a peaceful place and things will be fine. Yep. Not me. You know, intimidate you a little bit, seeing his reaction and the effect that it had on him. It did, but based off of what I saw on the live stream with his reaction, I thought maybe it was something just towards me. men, right? And maybe just you. I didn't think that she would react that way. Yeah, because with the medium me. did say that yeah. I was tr attracted to me because I looked like the woman's mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. um, I listened to a reading that you had done by Armand. I can't pronounce it, Ejibi, I think is the a, name. Ejibi, I think it right. is, Right, yeah. we're going to put the information on the on the, the screen. Um, he touched on a lot of things that J Jeanette touched on, and he went way beyond. Um, right away, he starts referencing, uh, sensing blood or death. He touched on the children. And then they're in the middle of all that, well, we'll go through a couple of these things, but he did mention about feeling like you weren't able to breathe at one point? What uh, happened? Yeah, the night before I had an incident, I was getting ready to go to bed, scrolling it's through my phone, one. and all of a sudden my arm, I got like this sharp pain, I couldn't even lift my arm, and it felt like I couldn't take a breath, and I actually got up and I went to my mom and I said, I need to go to the hospital, something's wrong. And at that time it didn't even cross me that she could be doing it to me, I had no clue whatsoever. Next day I was going to the medium, we had walked downstairs and I sat on the couch for a little bit and I took an Advil and it went away and I went to sleep. When he had brought that up, I think that was probably the most terrifying part of the reading, hearing that she was... Because you didn't really share that with anyone. That was something no, you internalized that, yeah, for that, yourself. Yeah, that was just, I thought it was like either an allergic reaction or something. I, that was the last thing that I thought. It, it's rare for any object to have a physical effect on people. Sometimes you you know you hear things. Well, move the funny thing about see, this this but, cape too is like you're saying about that you got affected when we're in the middle of doing the shoot and we didn't do it on camera. I they put that on me to and I felt like a bite. I thought I got bit by a spider because mm -hmm. it's an older jacket. And when I got home, I had a bruise on my neck. But also the one of the um, camera people here actually it brushed across her her thumb and she had a bruise there as well. So it's it's it doesn't like women. I don't think. Uh, is yeah. That what you're so what I'm learning here along with you guys is you have to have Chris in the studio for her to really. <laughs> I'm thinking of re replacing that, get a green screen and maybe put that behind us and I can get that kind of participation. That'd be great. You know? And, and I'm good at it too when you, I get you're going. You're good at it. I'm watching it going, <laughs> who, who's this person? <laughs> don't want to <laughs> rain on your parade. <laughs> but anyway, again, I don't know if she mentions it during this. That's why I keep watching it. But there was something else that happened. I'll wait to see if she referenced it. If not, then uh, I'll bring it up. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, based off of what that medium told me, she 
is a very jealous person. So when she sees somebody that's, you know, mentally healthier or doing well, she kind of wants to do something to kind of bring you down. And that kind of made sense to me that she would, you know, attack women. She wasn't a good mother. She wasn't a good woman. So who's to say that she doesn't have some kind of hatred towards women yeah, who are better than her? that was the thing in my notes that uh, she created the own, her, her own disaster in her life, that she was mentally ill, that she was negative, and I, I quoted him as, she gets off on scaring you. Yeah. Now, hearing all of that and experience what you have experienced, what's the next step here for you with, with that cape? Well obviously the activity has not stopped um, she hasn't done anything to harm any of us in the household yet since that meeting with the medium um, the next step was I had spoken to the medium about possibly trying to move her on right. he's not sure if he could even do it because she believes that she's her own entity and right. life force and my thing now is when she does do something I can't give her the satisfaction of being afraid of her because that is what antagonizes her and makes her keep doing it. So I've been kind of, yeah, I've been kind of just like, if I hear something, I'm just like, I try to ignore it. I try to. See, there's a very good point that we've spoken to several mediums, including Chip Coffee, about it. I don't believe that um, a living person can, quote unquote, cross a spirit over. Like Chip said when we interviewed him, if they can't figure out how to do it themselves. What if they're not ready to go? Exactly. So, and in this case, this is an angry woman who has her reasons and she's right mind or not a right mind. She's deciding I ain't going anywhere. I'm staying here. I'm doing what I'm doing. And this is it. So, and, and Armand's a pretty good medium. Uh, we've known Armand for years. Pretty and accurate. Yeah. He's very accurate. And I'm sure if he thought he could do something, he would. Not but you need to find a resolution here. You can't. Yeah. You're 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 sort of playing roulette in in thinking that you can handle this on mm-hmm. your own. And if he can't handle it, you need to start looking for resources because I was affected. You're being affected. Yeah. Even with the breathing, who knows the limits exactly. to what the power that that thing yeah. could yield? So you really need to start seriously considering. I anointed myself with holy water before step. I came on set with yeah. you. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, that needs to be your thought process. That, I've never come across something that has physically latched on to me and wouldn't let go. I mean, even being across from it now, it feels like it's staring me down. Like yeah. it's, And I didn't want to see it again. After I heard <laughs> that you purchased it, I said, oh, good. Yeah. I'm never going to see this thing again. But then when I ran into you and I found out you were the one who purchased it, I you immediately said to me, I got to tell you what this thing is doing. And I wasn't surprised in the least when you told me about the things that it was doing. I was afraid that whoever did own it, and I think Donna was too, that... Oh, Donna something, was happy when I bought it. She was like, good, she I'm wants glad to get rid it's going... It. Yeah, she said, I'm glad it's going home with you. Does this make you think twice about purchasing... Uh, yeah, I think I'm done purchasing objects for... A long do time. you do anything to protect yourself? Um, yeah, me and my mom, we are pagans, so we do a lot of like protection rituals. I mean, I have salt everywhere. I have a protection broom, like we sage at least once a week in the house. So we do do things to protect ourselves to make sure that we're I mean, protected, but it doesn't seem to work. Look at the nature of the person we're dealing with here. Yeah. Two mediums said about uh, murdering, uh, probably murdering a child. One said probably drowning. The other said, like you said, being stabbed. Um, to take that kind of energy mm-hmm. or entity. I think you can harness it. W- yeah. Into your house, you really could be asking for trouble. And this is for everyone out there who thinks about haunted objects or buying haunted objects. Make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you have some kind of strategy or a resource to go to if things turn bad, because they can. It really no, isn't a game. It is real. Yeah, I've absolutely. experienced it. You've experienced it. So, um, would you? It's rare that there's such a wise person that I get to watch and I listen and I just nod my head going, wow, that guy's really, he's right. Then I say, it's me. <laughs> And I, I surprised myself. I'm like, wow. You surprised me I all the time. I wish I could interview that guy. I wish that guy could, he, he could be right here with me. I mean, it would be. AI will make it will that be, happen uh, for it, you. it will in the future. It won't be long. But no, um, you know, like I said, uh, you take a chance, man. Something like that, that kind of energy. 
I wouldn't roll those dice. I, I really mm -hmm. wouldn't. Um, and, and she told me about another instance that she didn't mention here, but one of the uh, conversations we had, and I still remember, was that she said one night she, and this might have been after the taping, that she woke up and saw Victoria standing yeah. over her. You yeah. remember that? She was freaked out. She said gray hair up in like a bun thing, and she was standing right over her trying to choke her. Yep. And I, I thought that was in here. That was the thing not. that instigated her moving it completely downstairs yeah, yeah. and away from her and doing extra protection and stuff. The other thing is, is that John, John, they even talked about it when this episode was over. And I was just like, you're out of your freaking mind. Well, well, we may get to All it. All right. It might still be on there, huh? It, it might. It might. She's trying, people. And I'm trying to. Uh, can that guy co-host? Who is he? I got to get his name. It's gonna brilliant, go brilliant, man. <laughs> Think about getting rid of it at this point. Uh, yeah, to the right person who knows what they're doing. I wouldn't just give it to somebody who had no idea what You'd they be were responsible doing. about. It. Yeah, I'd have to be. I mean, we could help you with that. We know people who yeah. would be willing to take it on and put it somewhere where it would be protected. Yeah, and absolutely. I think that is probably the best course of action because I don't know if, like, I don't want to compare it to Annabelle because everybody knows if anyone could cross that over mm -hmm. it, it it would probably be a choice and i think yeah. like you said i don't think she that's the choice go. she's gonna yeah, make no i don't think so either but that's what i'm gonna try and if it doesn't work then the next option is to give it to somebody who can, can handle it yeah do what they need to do yeah because well. i mean i do have other objects in my house and when i first hung her on the wall i have it next to another object and it's a very sweet spirit that we've had in our house for a while now and her picture just fell off the wall. She yeah. didn't want to be anywhere near it. You've got to, you've got to really deal with this. My advice would be to get rid of it and to give it to someone. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll gladly help have someone help you. Absolutely. I thank you for coming in no, and sharing no your story with us. I'm sorry you're the one who decided <laughs> to take this thing, but yeah. you really should get rid of it. But yeah. thank you again for thank being here, Thank you so Kelly. much. Thank you, Kelly. Thank so, yeah, there was, after that... <laughs> We were talking about doing a follow-up follow up where I would be exposed to the Cape again. The a plan was, again, for, for TV and for the people that were watching that show, I was going to get a hotel room, hang the Cape up in the room and spend the night in the room with the Cape with cameras running the whole entire time just to see if she would come and try to choke me. Of course or she, she would. would appear well, and, I don't think she would try to choke you. I think she wanted to. Maybe she bring you into the uh, other, other, otherworldly uh, with her, you know? No, I don't. Explain to them what what that means. That she she maybe she would try to to harm you or get you to harm yourself so you can in essence be with her because you've passed on. Oh, I thought you were going somewhere completely different no, with that one. That's where I was going. <laughs> But um, I think that would have been um, a really good follow-up, a really good just – and I was willing to do it. And, you were. And we were talking about and I was And I was very anxious over it and very upset over it because I did not want you doing it but, at all. But it never, you know, never came to be. So, um, again, that was – we're, we're again, I, I like doing different things on here, and I like trying different stuff. And, and um, I don't know if you guys liked that kind of thing, just reviewing – some of the old shows and the old investigations and having us comment on them. If that's something you guys like, we'll do it again. If not, we'll trash it and never do it again. But um, I, I was just sitting there. I know we did. We, we actually had uh, lunch dinner with um, Ann, uh, Brian and Taylor, and they were talking about how much they liked the mine investigation, getting to see, you know, real time with the flashlight in the dark. And they felt like they were really there. And I thought, you know, maybe we could do more interactive stuff where we're commenting and, and watching the videos and, you know, doing that in real time. That was a good question. I think you should answer. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Michelle said, during that interview, the cape was hung in the open. Did anyone become affected? No. No, I, I was, I was, I was honestly, um, I was honestly nervous. It, it was on the set. Chris and I are kind of where we are here, sitting next to each other, and Kelly's probably a couple of feet away from us, and the cape was near her, a couple of feet away. But 
I did describe it properly. It felt like it was staring me down. It was just there. Yeah. And I felt like somebody was there watching me. But like, if you remembered before we went, we went on the set where they were I was putting thinking her, about that one, Laura. I actually, I actually anointed both John and I with uh, holy oil from the uh, Holy Lands, believe it or not, because I was concerned that something was going to happen. But again, I, I enjoy doing, um, Oh, good, good. I, I'm glad you guys like this. I enjoy doing more of these because even going back and watching it, we haven't we we haven't watched it since we did it. I mean, and that was a couple of years ago where we filmed this stuff before COVID. We stopped at COVID filming yeah. those episodes. And there's a few of them that are really, really good. And there's other um, investigations that are on our page from four years ago that we did at the Creeper Gallery that I could kind of yeah. cut out the the ones that are kind of boring and run the good ones and comment as we go through them and show the evidence over again because there's a lot of good stuff there there's a lot of objects again that come to mind just off the top of my head um there was bones that belonged to a five-year-old boy oh. and um at first it was kind of hard to reach him a little bit but then we started putting like the toys the objects we had on top of the bones and talking to him and trying to, and then he became really engaged and, and interactive. And, and that was one that I remember. Um, the cursed box, definitely one that we'll, we'll do over again and tell that whole story because it's unbelievable what happened. I never believed in curses before and that thing yeah. made it real for me. And then there was the, um, the book with the, uh, the censors were another one. Um, I mean, there's a lot of them. So we could definitely do this and go through in between live investigations and interviews and the gnome investigation. The gnome, <laughs> actually, that is a very good. You know what? You bring that one up. Yeah, but that is a good there one. are people that don't know what that one yeah. is or was, and that would definitely be one. So yeah, if you guys have requests, by all means, uh, put them in the comments or or send them to me in the inbox. The gnome. Was for those of you who don't know, and we're gonna go probably review that yeah, one. Curtis Fish. Uh, Curtis Fish. Um, Fisher. Curtis Fisher, I think, wasn't it? Um, he was a. Um, he wasn't a pedophile, was he? He was just a. He, a, he, he would assault women. Yeah. He, 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 he would assault women. Some, he got yeah. in jail. He was released. He assaulted another woman. They came to arrest him at his house, and stuff happened. And we'll get into that later, but. We capture some cool evidence and we capture <laughs> yep, an SLS session yes. to, is to be seen and remembered for and all time. And never talked about again. For all time. <laughs> One of the few times we didn't know how to describe what was happening and not get thrown off of Facebook or YouTube or <laughs> anything like that. But um, yeah, that's that's actually, that's actually a really good... Um, Curtis, Curtis Fisher is definitely yep. one we should bring back. But yeah, well, um, we'll start doing that. And I like the idea of doing that. So um, we'll do this again where we comment and you guys can watch it. We also have, again, some live investigations coming up that I'm scheduling before we start doing events. Um, interviews, uh, not this week, but uh, next week there's actually two. There's um, this woman, Sylvia Rossi, I want to say. I'm not sure the last name. We're going to talk about spirit guides and um, guardian angels with her. I told you we were going to have a discussion, even yeah. though I am on the fence about all this yeah. stuff. And I told her that. But she's open to being on, have a discussion. And Cody and Satori will be with us next Thursday as well. So uh, lots going on. And, um, you know, again, as far as events go... I will be releasing tickets for um, Liberty Hall is the next one that's going to be available. I believe it's April 13th is uh, the Liberty Hall, which the and then tickets will be available probably for all of the Centenary University events because oh, they wow. like to release all of them at one time. So that'll probably be happening real soon as well. So and then tomorrow. We are visiting a brand new location where there's claims of a lot of activity. People don't like being in the building past five o'clock at night. And we are meeting with the people that run it and we're going to get a tour of the building and who knows, maybe a live investigation and whatever afterwards. So something else to look forward to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I was 
thinking of going to the Creeper Gallery tomorrow, but with the snow and what we have to do tomorrow, I, I don't know. Probably not. Maybe Wednesday. Not sure. We, we, you know, this is a week where we don't have anything planned, which is good. Yeah. So maybe later in the week or whatever, we'll, we'll figure something out. But uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll do more of this. Um, I think it's cool to interact with you guys and show these clips and actually explain the whole story, even yeah. what happened after as much as we know. So we'll do more of this. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Good night, everybody. Stay healthy. Be safe. And please, please remember to be kind to each other. And if anybody knows the name of that guy on that show who's brilliant, just please send it to me and he'll be my new co-host because his hair is a little shorter than mine. He's a little younger. Uh, looks like a young Brad Pitt, I believe. But he could he could be next to me. That's all I have to say. All right, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. People, people yeah. like it.